All right. Welcome, welcome everybody to this Friday night uh, Shabbat Bible study. We're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Baruch Atah Adonai, Lehena Malek HaAlam, Asher Kishinu, B'mitzvotah, V'sevano Lassuk, Sereprit Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with your commandments and command us to engross ourselves in the words of your Torah. Those that don't know, the Torah is simply the writings of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Those are foundational books of the Bible. Uh, History, uh, critical history is found in those books. Uh, Table of Nations, you know, after the flood, uh, the, the nations were created through the lineage of um, of Noah, his three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so this is the most complete record of where their, their offspring um, settled in the world. You know, Gog and Magog, you know, you see Russia and Germany. Um, it lets us know where the uh, Gentiles, and those are primarily the people that from the Caucasus Mountains or the Caucasians, they were originally uh, considered Gentiles. Uh, but, you know, eventually Israel was spread all over the world. And I'm just kind of giving you some uh, glimpses into some of our future studies, but uh, we, we do need to understand uh, coming out of the flood that all the population came through Noah by way of his uh, three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And so we're gonna be dealing with um, a really important figure today um, from the uh, this, uh, lineage of Ham, and that's Cush and Nimrod. Uh, Cush was uh, the grandson of Noah, and then Nimrod was his son, so Noah's great-grandson. Uh, these are the individuals that really began to really create havoc uh, in the world in, in the form of uh, paganism <clears throat> and false religion. We're going to look at some things today. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Give me just one moment. All right. So you should be seeing Genesis 10, verses 6 through 10. All right. And the scriptures are reading. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan, and skip down to verse 8. And Cush begot Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Yahweh. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighter, mighty hunter before Yahweh. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Very important. And we're going to be dealing with that today. Go now to Genesis 11. Next, right, next chapter over. All right, Genesis 11, 1. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. So this plain is where they're going to decide to build this tower. Skip down to verse 4. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach under heaven, and let us make us a name, lest it be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they all and have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from this upon the face of the, all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name uh, of it called Babel, because Yahweh did there confound the languages of all the earth, and from this did the, Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Look again at verse 6. And Yahweh said, Behold, stop, look, and listen. The people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now, look what this is what Yahweh is saying about this people. And now, nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, this is Yahweh's testimony of these individuals. No limits to what they can accomplish because they are of one language and of one mind. 
Okay? So you need to recognize that when uh, people become together with one mind, one purpose, whether it's a, a holy purpose or an unholy purpose, uh, if they stay focused on getting that thing done, it can happen. Now, I want you guys to understand something. This right here was a prelude to something that's going to happen in the future. And I'm talking about our future. Because you got to understand, who, who put this into the minds of the people? Let, let me show you something. I'm going to go to the book of Jasher and show you their account of this. You, it's, not in, it's not in your Bibles. Uh, but I do want to encourage all of you to get the book of Jasher. Um, it's, it's in the Apocrypha, okay? And Jasher is mentioned in the Bible uh, on a couple of different occasions. And so this is talking about the same account, um, starting at verse 23 of, of the book of Jasher. And all of the families assembled, consisting of about 600,000 men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower. And they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley, at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days walk, and they journeyed there and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fire to, to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was under them a transgression and a sin. And they began to build it. And while they were building against Yahweh, notice now they're building this against Yahweh, Elohim of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. The first said, we will ascend into heaven and fight against him, fight against the most high. Okay. These people were, they, and they were off, right? The, the second group said, we will ascend to heaven and place our own gods, the gods they made with their own hands, they're going to place these, these you know, wood and, and brick, uh, stone or whatever, or the metal gods, and we're going to serve them, right? And the third part said, we will ascend to heaven and smite him with bows and spears. And Elohim knew all their works and all their evil thoughts, and he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And so, yeah, and we already know he came down and confounded their languages, right? So they couldn't speak. But you got to understand something. Now, where, where did this thinking come from? Uh, where did this thinking come from? Go to your Bibles in the book of Isaiah 14. So we're going to go to Isaiah 14. We're going to pick up at verse 12. It's asking a question about Lucifer. Now, for those of you that don't know, Lucifer was one of the three archangels in heaven. Hmm? It was three archangels, and he had he had control over one third of the angels in heaven. He was the top of the three. He was a, he was the highest ranking of the three, and his assignment was to be the actual armor bearer of the Most High. So he guarded the throne of heaven. You know he he you know had wings and he flew over it. And um, I wasn't planning on doing, but we may read it in. Um, Ezekiel 28, how he was made. You know, he was created with um, jewelry in him, you know, gems like diamonds and, and rubies and emeralds. And he had, you know, uh, tablets and pipes in him. So he was able to make his own music, right? He was able to make his own music. And if you can imagine him with all this jewelry, all these, these, these precious stones in his body, and then the light of the Most High shining through him as he's flying above his throne, I, gar I guarantee you it was a beautiful sight to see. Mm -hmm. And so because of how beautiful he was, because of how awesome the music that came out of him was, um, I mean, he, you know, he led the worship, he led the praise, right? You know, he was taking the glory onto himself. He saw, you know, he said, you know what? I can be like the most high, right? So let's read this now. This, this is kind of setting up this account in Isaiah 14, verse 12. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For you have said in your heart, 
I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Elohim. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend. Notice how many times he's saying, I will, mm -hmm. I will, I will. That's, that's a sign of pride. Mm -hmm. The original sin was pride. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. This is his boast, right? Mm -hmm. But now in the blue, we or here we're going to see uh, the most high is going to have a rebuttal for all that. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, <laughs> to the size of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? Notice none of this stuff is good. Right. You know, none of this stuff is good that he was doing in the earth, right? Uh, all the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, everyone in his own house. But you, Lucifer, are cast down like the grave, like an abominable branch. That's, you know, something that's un, un, you know, desirable, right? And as the raiment of those that are slain, uh, thrust through with a sword, they go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. If you can imagine... You know, a person wounded in battle. You got, a, uh, you know, troops marching, you know, uh, tens of thousands of men marching down this road. And they got this this one, you know, wounded soldier uh, that's an enemy. He's he's, he's, he's in the road. And the, the generals, and they're saying, keep marching. Say, marching, marching, marching. They're running, you know, all stomping over this 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 wounded person. That's, that's the picture that we have of the devil, right? You know, verse 19. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as a raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. That's what he's going to look like. You shall not be joined with them in burial, because you have destroyed thy land and slain thy people, his own people. The seed of evildoers doer, shall not be renowned, shall not be remembered. This is his status. This is this is this has been spoken over him, and this is the future that he holds. But what he's managed managed to do, this rebellious attitude that he has, that he had from the beginning, you know, because Yeshua, Yeshua said, "You sin from the beginning. You are a murderer from the beginning. You are a liar from the beginning." Mm -hmm. You know, he he told some some horrific lie that was able to get one third of the angels right. to rebel against him, mm -hmm. or rebel against the Most High. Um, and that's, I, that's one of the reasons why I believe that Yeshua um, had to be, you know, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You know, if, you know, if if you're going to rebel against somebody, you know, you got to have some reason to believe that somehow they're not worthy to be served, mm -hmm. right? They're not they're not worthy to be worshipped. You know, uh, but nothing. The scriptures tell us in James every good gift. And every perfect gift comes from the Father above, in whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning, mm -hmm. right? So he's always the same. You know, Yeshua the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He's never changing. Mm -hmm. And so they could have said some lie to, to, to try to discredit the Most High. But if you look, if you do a comparison between the two individuals, you know, what Satan has done mm -hmm. and what the Most High has done, there's no comparison in terms of who showed the most love. You know, the greatest gift that the, the Father could, could bestow was that he would give his only begotten Son. Mm -hmm. And the greatest thing, the greatest gift that the Son could give was to let his, his life be taken from him, right? Mm -hmm. he, he gave his life on behalf of all, all mankind. So, you know, uh, Satan, you know, he's not a giver. He's a taker. You know, um, Yeshua made it clear in, in John 10 and 10. The thief comes not but for for three reasons. And that's to steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? So let's go to uh, the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter. Now, then I want to uh, show you a, a couple of slides here, just kind of give you a picture of where we're going with all of this. Um, Revelation is 12. This is kind of giving us a glimpse of what happened in the past and also some things that are going to happen in the future. So we're going to go to
Revelation 12, we're going to pick up at verse 7. We have us have it. Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. That's another name for the devil. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. <laughs> Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And that great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. He, he not, he's going to use all of his names, right? right? right. So it's, there's no confusion about who we're talking about here. Right. Look at this now. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven, now has come salvation and strength. In the kingdom of our, of our Elohim and the power of his Mashiach. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our Elohim day and night. The devil's making accusations against the people of the Most High, trying to say they're not worthy to, to receive all the things he has in store for them. And they overcame him by two critical things. The blood of Yeshua, right? The blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. That's what cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. And by the word of our testimony. So the testimony that's been given in scriptures, we need to state that, confess that. That's where we get our victory from. The enemy, and we're going to be dealing with this in future lessons, his main, his main um, ability to, to defeat us is in getting us to think like him. He implants thoughts in our mind and want to get us to believe that his thoughts, his ideas are our, are, are, are our ideas. See, the same thing he did with Eve. He got her to think like he thinks. And once he was successful in getting her to think like he thought, then she began to act the way he wanted her to act. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. And the result was devastating because mm -hmm. she didn't go to a higher state after dealing with the devil, did she? Mm -hmm. She did what? She went to a lower state, right? She fell, right? And was and, and lost lost the privilege of being in the Garden of Eden, their protected place of, of, of wealth. He lost all of that. So this this is a result of of uh serving the devil. Uh well, let's finish reading verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto death. Now, this, this is a place that we need to be in right here. We need to get to the place where we can be in this world, but not of this world. Because there's a group of people that have absolutely sold themselves out uh, for the purposes of serving the devil. And you got to understand something. There is a, a reward for serving the devil. Did he really say that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. There is a reward for serving the devil. The problem of the problem of the Satan's reward, right? And it can be great. But the problem with his reward, it is only good in this world. See, because remember what happened, and I showed you this in, in, a, in a few lessons ago. When Yeshua was being tempted. 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. What was one of his temptations? Can anybody remember that? The kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, right? The kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He said, because this has been delivered unto me. And we learn who delivered it unto him. Who was it? Who delivered the, the kingdoms of the world unto the devil? <laughs> Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, because if you remember Genesis 126, right. let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the over the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, and over the whole world. That was their destiny. The Most High was in the process of colonizing the earth. Mm -hmm. So and so when Yeshua came and, and taught us how to pray, he gave us a pattern of prayer, right? He gave a pattern of prayer. He said, let thy will be done on earth as what? Amen. As it is in heaven. And that was original design and plan for this world. But because they delivered this world unto the devil, 
Now we have to pray to, to get the, the will of the Most High to be manifest in this earth with great contention. Because now we're having a fight in the battle against an adversary who has the dominion in this world. And, and unfortunately, <laughs> with his dominion, he's managed now to control the, the hearts and the minds of the vast majority of the people. Let's look at this now. Let's give you an example. We're, you know, we've been dealing with, uh, on last week, uh, Noah, Nimrod, and the flood. Mm -hmm. And we learned that uh, the hearts of men and their imagination was only what? Anybody remember? Their imagination. The imagination of men on the earth was what? Do you remember? Right now. Mm -mm, it was mm -hmm. it's before the flood. Oh, they were wicked. wicked. Yeah. Wicked, wicked evil, mm -hmm. continually, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's all they thought about. And so consider this now. The most high, it repented him that he made man. Mm -hmm. But then he, he gave Noah an assignment to build the ark. And then it, it was 120 years in building it which gave him 120 years to preach, oh, yeah. right? Right. right? To preach right. to the people, to right. repent, right. Right. change your hearts, mm -hmm. because a, a flood is coming. So, as soon as we get this thing done, this whole world gonna be destroyed. And all they did for 120 years was right. laugh at him mm -hmm. because it never rained. He's building an ark to protect against something that the people had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, when everything was said and done, the Most High looked around and it was only eight people mm -hmm. out of all, and we don't know how many people, you know, they, they had lived, you know, six, seven, 800 years, mm -hmm. you know, ha having sons and daughters, it could have been a million, two million people, maybe more, mm -hmm. right? There's 8 billion right now, mm -hmm. but it could have been multiple millions of people on the planet. And out of all those people on the planet, only eight souls were spared. Everybody else died. So that's giving you an idea. That's, that's, that's a horrible uh, percentage. That's not that's not even one percent. I mean, that's that's the world that Noah lived in. And so, when you know, the Most High promised said, "Listen, I'm not going to destroy the world again with the flood. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not going to I'm not going to ever do this again." And He gave us the blessing of the rainbow as a covenant that he would not destroy the world again. He did not give it as a covenant for those who wanted to, to, to destroy themselves, mm -hmm. right? To, to corrupt themselves with, the, with you know, men with men and women with women. That, they, they, mm -hmm. they stole that. But, you know, and we talked about that. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole, but it, it, it was a blessing that the Most High gave us. Mm -hmm. At the end of the rain, look for the rainbow. And it's my promise that I will not destroy the world again with flood, right? Mm -hmm. any, any question about that? Mm -hmm. Me and mom were at uh, that event, mm -hmm. um, and it was raining, it raining really hard, and like it was puddles everywhere. And when it stopped, we saw the rainbow in the front. I was like, okay. Right, right, right. Oh, okay. Exactly, Good. right. We're we not going to have no rain no more today. <laughs> well, at least it's a promise that he, mm -hmm. he, he going he gonna to wipe everybody with flood. Right. right. So, but you know, he keep, he's, he's a covenant keeping Elohim. He's a covenant keeping Elohim. And so the reality is, Though that may be the truth of uh, what he said, it doesn't mean he's not going to bring destruction again. There's so much conspiracy going on in this world. It, it, it is so much. But I, I want to um, pull up these slides that I'm talking about. I just want to um, show you some things here. This, uh, and I want to give thanks to uh, Truth Unedited. Uh, the brother does a beautiful job of uh, sharing really powerful information. Um, I want to encourage all of you all to uh, subscribe to his channel on YouTube, uh, Truth Unedited. Truth Unedited. Uh, young brother, uh, he spends a lot of time in this study and research. You know, I've been I've been in this thing for over 45 years. And um, I have to say that he has done a, a remarkable job in terms of his research, his study. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I want to admonish him to keep doing what he's doing. Uh, he's, a, he's a real blessing to the body of the Most High. But this is a diagram of uh, the Tower of Babel. 
And and these guys, you know, they just, you know, they have an attitude. They want to build this tower into the heavens and to destroy. And, and we read about it in Joshua, right? They want to go up there, put their gods in heaven. They want to, you know, shoot arrows and things and try to kill the most high, right? And uh, and just and just have a war in heaven. So the, the question then becomes, where did this come from? Right. Where did where did this idea come from? To have a war with heaven, who who impressed this upon them? Well, the devil, devil yeah, yeah, right, right. Satan did. You know, Satan's desire is to be like the Most High, and he's not he's not an originator of anything. The only thing the devil can do is to uh, imitate, and and so what he has managed to do, and and for the most part, it starts here at the Tower of Babel. Because what ended up happening, as we know, the Most High came down and he confounded the languages. Everybody, what did he say? Everybody's of one language and one speech, mm -hmm. right? And nothing will be uh, you know, withholding from them that they imagine to do because they're all of one mind and one accord. And so mm -hmm. this spot right here, the Tower of Babel in, in, in Babylon, mm -hmm. is where um, paganism originated. And so when they originated paganism, and, and pa paganism is basically the worship of more than one God, polytheism is what it's called, polytheism. And it basically takes the form of father God, mother God, and, and, and son of God. Mm. So it doesn't matter what culture you're talking about, whether you're talking about Egypt, Egypt or um, you, you talk about Rome, um, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, all of them have the same uh, paganistic pattern. And so you have to ask yourself, why does everybody basically have the same story, just different names? Right. It's because they confounded the languages. And so if when they left the Tower of Babel and they were they had a, a custom of how they worship, you know, uh, the devil, they had their, their custom when they joined together with those who spoke French and those who spoke Spanish and whatever the languages they were speaking, they settled in groups together, right? And they began to disperse around the whole world. And so when they set up their civilization, wherever they went, they took their gods with them. Oh, my now, is that making sense yeah. now? And so whatever they learned from Babylon, they took those gods with them and they began to practice it in those areas. And so what we see now, this right here is just showing uh, the different places, some of the different places and the primary places around the world where they had this sun god or the father god, the moon goddess or mother god, and then the reborn son or god's son. They all had this pattern. Babylon had Nimrod, which was uh, Noah's grandson. Semiramis was his um, actually his mother Ooh. that eventually became his wife. What? Mm -hmm. She was Cush's um, wife. Then when Cush died, she ended up marrying Nimrod. Right? And so she, she was all about power. She was all about power. And so since Nimrod was king, she wanted to be queen. So she married him. And then eventually oh, yeah. they had Tammuz, right? The son. Uh, in Egypt, uh, the father God is called Ra, and if you look, if you look at any of the, um, you know, um, Moses stories, uh, mm -hmm. the cartoons primarily, you hear him talking about Ra, right? Uh, so Ra was the father God for them. Isis was the mother God, mm -hmm. and then Horus, uh, mm -hmm. the son of God. In Greece, these are names. Most of these names you've heard before: mm -hmm. Zeus, mm -hmm. Artemis, and Adonis. Mm -hmm. Right? You've heard those names before. In Rome. These are names you probably heard, Jupiter, Diana, mm -hmm. Apollo. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you've heard some of these names. In the Nordic, you had Odin, Joro was the mother, and Thor. Everybody's mm -hmm. heard Thor, right? Yeah. He, he's the son of God for them. In Hindu, Vishnu, Chandra, and Krishna. And this is the interesting one that everybody got to get, because we're still talking about paganism, mm -hmm. Roman Catholicism. They have uh, God, Virgin Mary, and Jesus. So these are the names they use, 
but they're not talking about the same person because you got to understand something. In Catholicism, they have given Mary the same equal uh, co-saviorship as they did Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And they say that, you know, in her death, she died as a virgin. Even though, based upon scripture, she had at least <laughs> at least six or seven kids. Mm -hmm. Because one time when uh, Yeshua went home and they were telling him, you know, work some miracles. And, um, and you know, he, he couldn't do many works there because of their unbelief. And they said, mm -hmm. we, we know who you, you, you know, you aren't, you know, Mary, Mary's your mother. And we know your brothers and sisters. He named off at least four brothers and your sisters, plural. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about six or seven, maybe more siblings mm -hmm. that he had. Take care of his yeah, it, well, yeah. So in other words, for, she was not a perpetual virgin. The other thing they try to say about her is that uh, she was also born sinless, yeah. right? Now, now the problem with that is when a woman had a child, depending on whether it's a male child or a female child, they had to maintain their un uncleanness um, uh, 40 days, you know, for the son, 80 days for the um, for the daughter. I, I believe those are dates are right. And and they had to give an, um, a sin offering for their uncleanness. This just was a practice. Mm -hmm. This was a practice, you know. So so Mary had to bring those turtle doves after the, the um, birth of Yeshua to fulfill Scripture, right? Because because of you know um, the process was unclean. And so they had to give uh, an offering, you know, for her uncleanness. So they try to say that she was something that she wasn't. Now, this is not to dishonor her because she she deserves to be honored, you know, because of, because she was found to have favor and mm -hmm. she and she bore the bore the savior. But they have esteemed her. And one of the names they give her is the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven and that's a problem because in scripture the most high said that the children of israel provoked me to wrath because of their worship of the queen of heaven mm. and so why then would the most high have them to call his mother the queen of heaven when that's already a title that he despises mm. so but the catholic church called virgin mary Holy Mother of God, Mother of God, which that's not a biblical term, um, Queen of Heaven. All right. So, and then for those who just straight out, straight out worship the devil, the Luciferians, um, the father for them is Lucifer, uh, the mother is Goddess Diana, and then uh, the son is going to be the Antichrist, and he is yet to come. Diana Who? Superwoman? Super? Not, it's not Superwoman. I mean, um, uh, no. You're talking about um, that could be the same person, though. It uh, could be the same it's person. It's it's one of the DC. Um, yeah. It could very well be. The, uh, yeah, it could very well be that same person because we certainly know Thor is one of the the people that they they consider, right? <laughs> so these are just some samplings of some of the major civilizations that have um, have existed, and these are the, the uh, these are the the gods, the names of the gods that they worship, right? Now, for those who just worship the devil flat out, um, this is a, a name that you'll see in the Bible, uh, Baal, right? Uh, um, sun God, again, in Egypt, Ra, Greece, Zeus, Rome, Jupiter, and uh, Hindu is uh, Indra. Israel is Molech. That's another name that you're going to find in the Bible, right? Israel, they literally... Um, Molech, Molech, yeah, Molech. They, they used to worship Molech. And they would um they would actually put their own children in the fire to honor Molech, something that the most high told them, I do not want you doing what they did. Don't don't I'm going to take these other people out, I'm gonna give you their land, and I don't want you to be worshiping the way that they worship. This is not what I'm requiring of you. But yet and still, they were give, giving their own children over to Molech. Okay. Now, Albert Mackey, uh, he wrote an encyclopedia of Freemasonry, and he talks about uh, the origins of Freemasonry. And, and notice what he says here. At Babel, Oliver says that what has been called 
spurious Freemasonry, right? Or, you know, um, you know, it's like an error or um, lies about Freemasonry is where it actually took its origin. That is to say, the people there abandoned the worship of the true God. Now, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. They abandoned the worship of the true God at the Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. And by their dispersion, lost all knowledge of his existence oh, no. and of the principles of truth upon which Freemasonry is founded. We're talking about uh, a false religion that exists today, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Hence, it is that the old instructions speak of the lofty Tower of Babel as the place where language was confounded and Freemasonry was lost. Mm -hmm. So they're saying that that event, when the Most High confounded those languages and caused all those people to be dispersed, it caused their actual practice, the way it was designed to be, to be lost. And so you got to understand something. This is one of the most powerful cult religions on the planet. And, and, and they are ruling and controlling a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be in a fraternity. I, I've renounced all that. But fraternities, they're, they're, they're uh, the nine, they call it the divine nine. You see that on that oh, exactly. That's that that Masonry symbol, and, and, and you will see a lot of pastors who's in is in is in Masonry. Now, now there's 33 degrees in Masonry, and 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 then you got to understand how these things work, how these secret societies work, and even Catholicism worked the same way, and there's even some some other religions that were basically the same way. The, the priesthood and those who are in charge and, uh, and responsible for the teaching, they know what they believe. Mm -hmm. Because in, on a 33rd degree of masonry, so that means you got 32 degrees below them, they're, they're, they've been involved in this organization for years, they, they've you know, given their allegiance to it and all that. Once you get to the 33rd degree, they make it very plain, we serve the devil. We worship Satan. Right. So so many of these uh, secretive organizations, they they don't let the masses know. Catholicism, uh, I was looking at uh, uh, a video on, on Catholicism and it was talking about the priesthood and, and they, they speak to the people in Latin, a language that they don't even understand. And this one person got a hold of the prayer that they're praying in Latin and uh, and. Uh, so, you know, he, he dissected and, and, and began to explain very clearly that they are literally praying to the devil mm. over the people that's coming to mass. <laughs> They're literally praying to the devil. It, it's, it's, it's madness, but the masses of people don't know. You know, you got over a, a billion Catholics in this world, and most of them believe that they're, you know, serving the Most High, mm -hmm. you know, serving Yeshua, but the leadership are as evil as they come, right? And they're and they're serving the devil. So, you know, this guy right here is making it very clear. This event, he's making it clear that this event that happened at the Tower of Babel was not good for them. It was not good for them. So what's taking place? What What is the, the end game? What Babylon represented was a one world government. Yeah, yeah. It was one world government. Everybody spoke the same language. Mm -hmm. And he literally, he was the first uh, world ruler, Nimrod. And so that was Satan's original plan was to, you know, because he wants to be like the Most High. So what is the Most High like? The Most High has a son, Yeshua HaMashiach, in whom he receives glory through the Son. And so Satan is trying to do the same thing. So Nimrod was, was sort of his uh, representative on the earth, just like Yeshua came and was representing the Most High on the mm -hmm. earth, right? And so Satan wants to be worshipped through his representatives. And I showed you the different names of the different representatives that he's had, depending upon, you know, whether you're in Egypt or, or um, Babylon or wherever, right? And so his ultimate goal and plan is to have a one world government. And I'm going to show you some, some things here that's, that's letting us know that we're moving towards a one world government. Now, we're citizens of what country? United States. United States, right? Mm -hmm. 
But this right here is talking about what? Global citizenship. Festival. A global citizenship festival. So what is a citizen? Miriam Webster says a citizen is a member of a state, a native or naturalized, meaning either you were born in or you became through a process, naturalization process, a person who owes allegiance to a government and is entitled to protection from it, right? That so that government is going to provide some protection. So if you are a global citizen, then you become a citizen of that global government, okay? So we're going to see here that every year they're having a global citizens rally, right? A global citizens rally. And, and there's, you know, so there must be some form of a global gov government if they're having this global rally, right? So if you, if you want to learn more about it, globalcitizen.org, right? There's, there's a, this is a lo location where you can go, a website you can go to, to learn more about what it means to be a global citizen. And it's all leading towards this United Nations. The United mm -hmm. Nations consists of about 193 countries. Virtually every country on the planet comes under this umbrella. And they have basically pledged themselves, including the United States, all these, these countries have pledged themselves to basically obedience to the United Nations so the United Nations have had, they have the structure to be a one world government. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the juice yet. They don't have the juice yet. What do you mean you don't have the juice yet? There's, there's gotta be a person that comes on the scene that the nations will say, okay, he's worthy of my, my allegiance. Huh. Right, that's where they're moving towards. <laughs> and once this person comes on the scene, then what the, what the book of Revelation says, who can make war with him? You know, they're gonna they're gonna literally give their allegiance to this this world ruler. That's right. Okay, so I'm 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 just I'm I'm sharing this information with you guys. I want you to know the Bible has been talking about this, right? But people need to recognize and wake up and realize that this this is on the way. The United Nations is a is a part of the complete symbolism of the beast found in Revelation 13. And the fourth beast of Daniel 7. They're both exactly the same. Mm. And it's coming up under uh, the disguise of the United Nations. Okay? Right? So his authority will be granted by Satan. Mm. Satan is going to give the authority to this ruler that's going to be uh, in charge of the United Nations. And it's going to be over the entire world. If you notice this, uh, this emblem... It looks much like uh, the Romans. Mm -hmm. Remember that you know they they had theirs yeah, look like mm -hmm, yeah. very much the same, mm -hmm. and and kind of the way Rome conquered, you know they would kind of let people be as long as they gave their allegiance to um, the Caesar. Mm -hmm. You know they they allowed uh, the Jews to be in Jerusalem and they could you know worship the way they wanted to worship. Mm -hmm. you know, they did as long as they did not do anything to disrupt. What was going on in Rome, but then eventually, when when after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, things got real crazy because mm -hmm. they said these people are turning the world upside down. And so, by the time Nero Caesar came into power, he began to kill the Christians, you know, burn them at the stake, feed them to lions. Uh, he'd have live um, X-rated shows in the coliseums, you know, using the, the um, Christian women. You know, to entertain people through through their sexual exploits. I mean, it was just ridiculous, man. But that's 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 the world that they became. So Rome eventually became you know pretty wicked, and it, and it, it led to their downfall to a degree. Rome, as it existed, ceased to exist. But after Constantine, they converted into a religious organization, and that religious organization since three three twenty five A.D has been continuing to exist almost 2,000 years. So uh, it's the longest running organization, you know, uh, on the planet. Mm. And that's that's Roman, the Roman Catholicism, okay? So this is where we're going, yeah. a new world order. It, you know, and they've been talking about this, I know it goes back to uh, at least Reagan, 
when Reagan was in power in what uh, eighty four, I believe. They've been talking about New World Order. Every president since Reagan have spoken the words New World Order. Okay. You've, you've heard of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Every president has talked about the New World Order. So you can't have a New World Order unless the old order is done away with. Mm -hmm. Right? Unless the old order is done away with. And so there's going to be some event that's going to lead to the destruction of that. It's just another this is Whoopi Goldberg, mm -hmm. you know, at another one of these what global citizen events. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of a uh, lot of lot of people that you know every year when they have these events, you know, this, you know, all these people have uh, become global citizens. You know, these people that are in the know, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they know what's coming, and so um, they're you know they they're punching their ticket, you know, to become this, you know part of the global citizenship. You know, even uh, Bill Gates, what he's saying, mm -hmm. become a global citizen, right? right? Oh. Become a global citizen. So, you know, it, folks, it's right around the corner. You know, it could very easily happen in our lifetime. Because I'm, I'm going to show you some other things that um, virtually everything that's needed. You know, um, I remember when I, I've been saving 45 years. And I, I used to subscribe to the pre-tribulation rapture. And we would talk about, you know, the mark of the beast. And we would talk about, um, you know, how it's going to be no buying or selling. But we really didn't understand how it could happen. Mm -hmm. But now the technology exists, right? The technology exists where they can literally have uh, where no transaction can take place. You know, and I'm going to be showing you some of that in, in, in some of the future slides um, where, you know, there could be no transaction without, without their say-so. You know, so what's going to eventually happen? This right here is showing the U.S. national debt. Mm -hmm. You know, twenty-three trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. That 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 money will never be paid for. May mm -hmm. never be paid off. You know, they have been spending money at ridiculous rates. Mm -hmm. You know, since two thousand eight, and then when the banks fell, you know, this this number has quadrupled. You know, uh, since that time, mm -hmm. and so. What was leading to is a failure of of our uh, economy. You know, it's going to lead to a failure of our economy. And so, what's going to happen? It's going to be a world currency. And so, because in order for the beast to come into power mm -hmm. and say there's going to be no buying or selling, right? There's got to be a world currency, and it's going to be a digital currency. They're going to do away with paper money, and eventually, it's going to have. Yeah, well, the, the reality is, you know, it's rare for me to carry cash. Mm -hmm. You know, most of my transactions are either with plastic mm -hmm. or, you know, if, you know, if I need to send somebody some money, I, I do a cash app or sale, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, so money, as we've known it, is really starting to cease yeah, to exist, yeah, right? right? They're doing away with it. So just think if you couldn't access your debit card and you went shopping and all of a sudden they say, you know, you can't use this. You, you'd be in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, if you couldn't go to the bank and you can't use your, your, your debit credit card, you, you're pretty much out of, out of uh, you know, the ability to, to, to buy or sell. That's why they start making change. Mm -hmm. Can they can do away with all that? Hard money is is a, a, a thing of the past, okay? So, you know, this talk about, you know, something about what is the United Nations? You know, uh, this is the overview of it. <clears throat> the United Nations is an international organization Founded in 1945, it is currently made up of 193 member states. The mission and work of the United Nations are guided by the purposes and principles contained in its founding charter. So, so what are some of these things? Maintain international peace and security, right? That's, that's one of their functions. They're going to maintain international peace and security. So they're going to have the force and the strength at some point. Where all that responsibility of maintaining the peace and security is going to fall on the United Nations for for years and for decades, you know the real uh, world police force was the United States, mm -hmm. but you know eventually all that responsibility is going to fall to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Protect human rights, sure. right? Now, now our rights should be protected by our own government, which is the United right. States, mm -hmm. but eventually. Remember now, we're talking about becoming global citizens. 
this these things I'm talking to you right right now about is inevitable. There's going to be a world government because it's already been prophesied in the in the scriptures. There's nothing we we can't pray it, we can't fast it, we can't do anything to to stop these things because this is prophetic. Right, right. It's already been said. My what I'm doing right now is educating you on what is to come. Okay. And prepare yourself because you got to be on the right side of this thing. You got to be on the right side of it. Because what we what we talking about when when this beast come into power, we're only talking about a seven year period. A seven year period when he's going to be in power, and the scriptures do say that he's going to be he's going to be given power to make war with the saints, mm -hmm. and he's actually going to overcome some. And, and, and the saints who, who have already been glorified, they're going to say, when are you going to uh, avenge, you know, the blood of, of our brothers and sisters, right? And and he, and he said, the day is coming because he, he's literally going to be beheading some. Some, right, some people right. are going to have to be martyred to show the proof because he said they love not their lives unto death, mm -hmm. unto death. So this is a sobering conversation. I get that. This, this is not the shouting part of this message, but it's something you need to understand that we can have uh, the Esau mentality. Esau had a, had the right to be the firstborn son mm -hmm. and to get the, 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 blessing. the blessing of the firstborn. And he gave up the blessing of the firstborn for a bowl of soup. I'm hungry, right? I'm a, I'm a, I don't care about no birth, right? Give me some soup. Mm -hmm. So some people are going to give up eternal life for the privilege of being able to buy and sell. You know, for a season of seven years or maybe six years or five years left or four or three years left. And they're going to say, man, I'm not going to go through all this stuff, man. Give me that, give me that bar. Give me that chip. And what, what does it take? You know? And there's gonna be some people who are gonna know the truth and still, and still do the wrong thing. And, and, and we talking about trading in eternity for a temporary benefit. You gotta ask yourself, what's is it worth it? Right? So, so again, part of the job is gonna be, you know, to protect your human rights, right? Uh deliver humanitarian aid. Now, the United States has been one of the leaders in uh delivering humanitarian aid, but they're saying right here. That the United Nations is going to take on that responsibility. That's that's their that's in their charter of things to do. But again, they have not been given the juice yet to be functioning in the in these in this capacity, and to uh, promote sustainable development. So uh, we got to understand. Um, and this final one is uphold international law. So this international law is going to supersede any laws of of any nation. You know, they're going to become the authority on, on the earth. So this this global citizenship, this global um, rulership is going to take uh, precedence over everything else, mm -hmm. right? Um, it says here regarding uh, uh, uphold international law, these powers are given to it by the UN Charter, which is considered an international treaty. As such, it is an instrument of international law and the UN member states are bound by it. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in print, they, they already have the authority. The only thing that's missing is the leader. Right. The only thing that's missing is the leader that's gonna enforce uh, these, these responsibilities. All right? So, um, and it's interesting, on your money, I don't know if anybody got a dollar, but, um, you know, but this right here, this 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 saying that's on a dollar is talking about um, the 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 new world order. That's what that's what that it's a saying up under this part that's not not visible here. But this this is saying that you know in in in, in supposedly in God we trust in the new world order is is what it's saying in in Latin. Okay, so it's going to be one world government. Yeah, it says right on the dollar. The new world order. The new world order. It's on, it's on a dollar. Now, uh, Mark of the Beast. 
uh, you know, everybody know, you know, nobody's going to be able to buy or sell without having, you know, the mark of the beast either in your hand or in your forehead, right? That's what the scriptures say. So what we're seeing right here is a demonstration of a person who already has this chip and he's being scanned here. This this guy is, is, is making a transaction and he's scanning this chip. And this is what his comment is. I can't believe it. He just paid with his hand. Mm. He just paid with his hand. When he scanned his, that chip, the money was transferred from from uh, the chip in his hand, and he was able to make a payment. Wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's the, the time is here, folks. Oh, yeah. he already took that mark that was in his hand. Well, here's the thing: when when we go into this uh, mark of the beast, it's, it, it's probably not going to be you know, some building with a sign outside, come and get the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Definitely not. Right? It's not going to be that because people know, you know, people, enough people know that, you know, I'm not going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. But it's probably going to be, you know, some process where they're going to be saying, you know, you want to come and get this chip so that you can really protect your 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 assets and your resources. Oh, so instead of having to carry, yeah, they're okay. gonna trick you into it. You know, they are yeah. They, uh, cash up is apparently like right, leading, right. Leading they already that. stealing money out your your bank account and stuff, huh? Yeah, they you know you know do away with having to have you know social security card, do away with having to have you know ID. You know, everything is going to be all your information, your your medical information, all these things are going to be is going to be limited down to this this little chip. And so, if you need to do a transaction, you know, you can authorize somebody that can pull the information they need from this chip. So the technology is in place where the mark of the beast can actually happen. Like I say, you know, I've been in this thing for forty five years. You know, forty years ago, the technology did not exist where they could have. Uh, transactions being done through hands like that. You know, we thought it might just be some kind of a scanning code, but no, it's going to be a literal chip that's going to have all your information in it. So, any any questions? Any questions? Stop and share. I'm sorry, for the last seven years, so seven years of our... Seven, yeah, seven, yeah, not 7,000 years, seven yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Um, wow. And after seven years, that's when everything happens. Uh, judgment. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be judgments. You know. Um, wow. You know, seven bow bowls, seven bowls, seven trumpets, yeah. and all that stuff gonna be happening all during uh, that seven year reign. You know, initially it's gonna, you know, he's gonna come into power. They're gonna be talking about peace and safety, right? Uh -huh. But yeah. then uh, after that, it's gonna be sudden destruction because. Uh, you know, it's basically the people are choosing to um, worship the mo uh, the devil over the Most High. I see. Here's a question um, in the chat. I believe. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. That's a, that's a good question. Okay, so uh, Megan asked a question: What if people actually get this mark and later realize it's not for them? What can they do? Um, Wow. You know, yeah. I I don't, you know, that's interesting. And I don't know all the details about how this thing is going to um, be rolled out. Um, you know, some people believe, and I, and I, and I indicated that uh, a little while ago, that, you know, people are going to be potentially tricked into it. Like I said, it's probably mm -hmm. not going to be a sign. But, you know, the more I think about it, um, let, let, me, let me pull this up. What the scriptures read. This was in Revelation 13. Revelation 13. All right, I'm going to start at verse 4. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? It's something I stated earlier, right? Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. 
and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, right? Mm -hmm. So he, this is a person that will come in power at the UN, mm -hmm. right? He's going to have power over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose mm -hmm. names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain mm -hmm. from the foundation of the world. So we know that people are going to be worshiping him. If any man have ear, let him hear. Uh, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like the lamb, like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Now, this is their counterfeit of the resurrection of Yeshua. Right? They, they're going to have some person, this is uh, this beast. Uh, this leader is going to be killed and then he's going to be brought back to life. Now, I don't know if it's going to be done through AI or it's going to be actually somebody going to come back to life. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Mm -hmm. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their mm -hmm. foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is a number of a man. And his number is 600, six score, three score and six or 666. Mm -hmm. So this guy is gonna be in power. And he's going to cause these people. First of all, he's already demonstrated that mm -hmm. he is satanic. He's been profaning the name of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So those of us who know the scriptures, who have been studying, who have been learning the Most High's ways, mm -hmm. we're, you know, and why am I having this lesson? To prepare you for what's to come. And if it happens in our lifetime, I want you to be ready, right? So when the signs of these things are showing up, you know, you don't want to fall prey to it, whatever it looks like, mm -hmm. you know, if it, you know, because I don't know how it's going to unroll, un unfold, right? right? But we certainly know, I know I'm not taking no chip in my hand. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, and, and, and Elon Musk from Tesla, he's got a chip that he's working on that can go in the, into the brain, mm -hmm. right? The brain scan. Yeah, right. So, so the, they're working on the technology. Mm -hmm. Already, right. so you know, obviously going to probably be some some uh, interface in the forehead mm -hmm. that you know you can scan and, and and they can keep all that madness, right? Yeah. So we just need to recognize that this stuff is real and it is coming. So we need to prepare ourselves for an, an alternative lifestyle, and I'm not talking about no gay lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about so how do I live? If they get to the point where I can't buy or sell, I can't access money, you know. And I'm talking about you know the digital money. Right. Mm -hmm. You can you can have have a, a, a uh, you know your your safe full of money, but if they if they get off of the currency, ain't as we good. know it, it ain't gonna be any good. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's they're only gonna have a digital currency, and so if you don't have access to it, and if you know if you don't have a chip, you're not gonna have access to to that. The, to the um the blockchain. So that's like the Bitcoin or something. Exactly, Bitcoin is the forerunner to this digital currency that they're going to use. Bitcoin is the forerunner. It's the one that provided the technology that they need to do all the stuff they need to do. Nice. Hmm? Well, well, the thing is, I mean, the Bitcoin is not evil. No more than a gun is evil. Mm -hmm. It's it's what's what you know what's done in the in the hands of the person yeah, who uses person, it. Right, right. You know, so you know uh, the devil is giving this technology to people mm -hmm. so that he can set things in motion to create what he wants to create in this end time. 
And one of the things that the Most High said about the day of Nimrod is every person here is, uh, is of the same language. Mm -hmm. They can all communicate with each other. But guess what happens when they go to the UN and they have meetings? Mm -hmm. They have headphones on, mm -hmm. right? And, right they, and they're speaking to this mic right. and it's immediately translated okay. into the language right. of the nation that they're talking okay. to. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So, so what is that doing now? Is giving them one speech again. Right, right, right. So, right. so where where the Most High confounded the languages, now the technology exists. Where yeah, it may be a, you know a whole bunch of different languages, but we have the technology now where we can all speak together mm -hmm. as one voice. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so we we didn't come full circle. We're right back to the Tower of Babel again. Mm -hmm. We're right back there creating this one world government, you know, for the purpose. And what, what did they want to build that tower for? To have okay. war. War with, with, with the same thing happened. Yeah, they want to make war with the Most High. And when all this is said and done, you know, he's going to rally his troops again, not talking about the devil and, 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 the, and the beast, to make war with the saints. You know, but then eventually, when you see, look at Daniel's account of this thing, he says it's going, it's going to be a boulder that's going to show up. And it's going to destroy the other four uh, kingdoms of the world. And he's going to eventually set up a kingdom that cannot be defeated. He's talking about Yeshua's kingdom. When Yeshua establishes his kingdom that will never come to an end, mm -hmm. we who are serving him are going to rule and reign with him forever. So that means all of us, some of us might still be alive through this, right? Yeah, some of us may make it to the end. Right. right you know, right, right. when when Yeshua uh, gets ready to come back and establish his throne. So when he come back, are we still we gonna be caught up or we gonna... Yes, what's gonna happen? Thessalonians talks about it. Let, let me go to this real quick. All right. So first Thessalonians for your notes. First Thessalonians. Yeah, first Thessalonians four. All right. We'll start reading at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua will Elohim bring with him. Mm -hmm. okay. For this we say unto you by the word of, of Yahweh, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of Yahweh, of or Yeshua, shall not prevent or go before them which are asleep. For, for Adon himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them, meet Yahweh where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with Yahweh, with, with Adon. So we're meeting him in the air. It didn't say we, you know, we were caught up in the heaven. Right, right, right. We're meeting him in the air. So then the question, and the final thing I'm gonna say here, wherefore comfort one another with these words. We're gonna meet him in the air. Now let's go to uh, and look at your go to your table of contents to Zechariah. Zechariah, let's go to chapter. 14. I made it at 13. Oh, okay. We're going to start reading at verse 1. Megan said, You have some people who don't, who really don't know and don't read the fine print. <laughs> you know what, though? Um, they need to start. That's one reason why I started this Bible study. Right, right. Because the scriptures tell us to study, mm -hmm. to show ourselves approved, mm -hmm. a workman that need not be ashamed, right? Mm -hmm. Rightly dividing the word of truth. He gave us this book. You know, um, I got a new garage door uh, opener and it has some different features and stuff in it. And so I had to get the book out and start studying it because it, you know, it's going to be able to have an app on my phone that I can, that I can use to open the garage door for stuff from my phone, right? So without reading the book, I won't know how to use the app. Right. right, right. Well, guess what? Without reading this book, you won't know how to use your body, mm. your, your person, who you are. 
Because this is basic instruction before leaving earth. The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And, you know, every person that is, you know, this Friday, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody right now is making plans to go to some hotel or motel right. to creep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when they get to that motel, they open up that door, that drawer, it's probably a Bible right there. Yeah. That's what they would tell them that you shouldn't be doing what you're right. doing right now. Right. You know, so the reality is, Megan, people are really without excuse. Okay. Because we make time to do the stuff that's important to us. But the Most High gave us a book of instruction to help us to know what's coming. I mean, look at how much stuff that I've shared with you guys today. You know, just, just you know, just this is better than CNN news right now. Right, right, right. You know, to help you to know and understand what is really taking place today. Mm -hmm. You know, so people are without excuse. Mm -hmm. They need to take the time to get into that word. Mm -hmm. And to understand, because this, this 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 is prophecy telling us what's coming. Mm -hmm. So we need to be prepared for it. So, you know, they need to start reading the fine print, in other words. Okay? Yeah, um, that book I used to read, Revelations of Hell, mm -hmm. every time somebody died, when Yeshua came and got him and took him to the pit, because he said, when they asked, he said, I sent people to tell you mm -hmm. and you you couldn't give up your way exactly right right and i was like wow yeah so <laughs> it, it, you know, it the most high and, I, and it's a scripture i want to read I'm, I'm gonna read that too um don't let me forget i have a script i need to read don't let me forget if i haven't if i'm if i okay. haven't gone to it don't let me okay. don't let me forget okay. i should go to it right after this one mm -hmm. Zechariah 14 1 mm -hmm. behold the day of yahweh comes now i've told y'all in, in previous lessons the day of mm -hmm. Yahweh is not a day of, you know, jumping and shouting and having joy. Mm -hmm. It's a day of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So behold, mm -hmm. the day of Yahweh comes and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle and the city shall be taken and the houses rifled and the women ravished and half of the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, when I, I read this, first time I read this, I was confused. Mm -hmm. You're gathering nations against Jerusalem to battle. And their houses are going to be rifled and the women ravished. And I said, but those are your people. Right. But then when you read in Revelations 2, 9 and 3, 9, I know those who say they're Jews, but are not, but they're of the household of Satan. Mm -hmm. The, the six-point star is a satanic symbol. Like, There's yeah. no star of David. That is a satanic symbol. So you, that Hanukkah thing I got with the star on it, if no, throw it out. I, I broke mine off the best I could. I had that, that okay. six-point star on my on my candle. Okay. I just broke them off. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it, it, in fact, on my um on these. My teeth, my my prayer shawls and stuff. Mm. They, when they make these, they put that star of David on there. And I I I, I got a um, precision knife and I cut all that stuff off. Wow! Yeah, and I'm not, you know, it's a it's satanic. Okay, let me take that off. And... Yeah, do the best you can, you know. Cause hey, I'm like, <laughs> I, 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 see, I, I took that off. Right. Yeah, I stretched it off. I cut that off. You said cut it off. I cut it. I cut it off. Yeah. I cut it off. Yeah. Yeah. So. There are some people in Jerusalem, and I'm talking about a lot of the leadership. They're satanic, mm -hmm. you know. So, so that's why a lot of the stuff is go on, right? Yeah. So, so verse three. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in the in that day upon Mount Olives, Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, or, or, or kind of fall into, there toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of us toward the south. Ooh. So it's going to create a valley. That's, that's going to be where the, uh, the Battle of Armageddon is going to occur. And you shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, you shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Yahweh my Elohim shall come 
and Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. And Yahweh my, my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. So what I believe is happening here, the dead in, in Mashiach shall rise, mm -hmm. and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with Elohim mm -hmm. in the air, where with, with, with Yeshua in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. Why? Because he's on his way to Jerusalem. Oh. He's on his way to Jerusalem, and he's got all his saints with him because he's going to win this battle. Okay, let's let's start. Uh, let's start on verse seven. But it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out of, from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. So you see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. He's establishing his, his mm -hmm. thousand year reign. Right, 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 right. And all his saints are with him. In that day shall there be one uh, Adon, and his name one. And all the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Rama, to Rama, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be uh, lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel unto the king's winepress. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague where, where on, uh, the Adon will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Ooh. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. Ooh. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouths. Ooh. Now, when I read that, what does that sound like to you? Like they melted away. So atomic uh, atomic wow. bomb. You know, yeah. this has already happened before. Right. Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. When they dropped the, the uh, atomic bombs on Japan, that, that's what basically happened to them. Mm -hmm. Tongues were, were dissolved, eyes were dissolved, yeah. skin was just burned mm -hmm. off. And, you know, you have bones just standing in the middle of the street. So this could, you know, he, he may cause an atomic weapon to go off. Well, it could be a blast from his mouth. Who knows what it's going to be? But that's uh, what—that's basically what what he's describing. Yeah. Verse thirteen, and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahweh shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on, on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor, and Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together gold and silver and apparel in great abundance, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we're stacking up the, the, the wealth. Mm -hmm. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of the, all the beasts that shall be in these tents as, as this plague. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king with a capital K, mm -hmm. and the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So we're going to still keep, be keeping that feast day mm -hmm. every year for a thousand years. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So if you got a, a, a nation that's saying, you know what, I'm not going up there to see that king. <laughs> They're gonna be they're gonna be in the desert for for a whole year. Right. And then next right. year they, they get their mind straight. Right. I think we better go and give this uh, this offering, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and verse eighteen, and I see it's a couple chats, and I'm gonna get there in a minute. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, they have no rain. There shall be the plague wherein Yahweh will smite the heathen that comes not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that day shall there be bells be upon the bells of the horses, holiness unto our unto Yahweh. And the pots in the in Yahweh's house should be like the bowls before the altar. All right, let me see what these uh, chats are saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, um, so I'm 
I'm assuming you say you shouldn't buy nothing from over there. You know what? <clears throat> I'm assuming he's talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's hard to say because you know, if you buy press, y'all, it's most likely it's gonna come from Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. So I mean, you know, we we don't have anybody that's making this stuff for us. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody comes into Hebrew, you want to get your press shawl, you just gotta doctor it up, get to take those doggone stars off of it. You know, star that so-called star of David, that, that satanic star. Um, but I'm you know, you, you gotta do do what you can do. If you want to learn how to sew and make up your own, that's fine. But they have the um the expertise to make these garments. The problem is, like I say, they are the leadership is is somewhat satanic, and they and uh, that's why I used to be confused by that when I read in Revelations two and nine. Go ahead. That's another thing to where they tricking people that mm -hmm. don't know. Exactly. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're talking about a star of David. There's nowhere in the Bible that talks about a star of David. Yeah, you know, but they 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 using the satanic symbol, uh, one of the most satanic symbols. You know, it's on it's on your money too. It's on the dollar bill. Mm -hmm. They got that that's that's that point of star on there. Um, that you know, this will be some some biblical star. It's not, it's not a biblical star. It's a satanic star. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's talking about you know holy oil and water and books and stuff like that. I mean, I can say you know, I got a, you know a complete Jewish Bible. You know, um, in, in, you know, I don't know where it, where it's made. It could have been made in Israel. I'm not saying that we just we can't buy anything from them. Um, I'm just saying, just be aware that that the people, the leadership, the leadership that's in Israel right now are corrupt. And you know, and the, the reality is, the Pope is doing a world tour right now, mm -hmm. and he's bringing, he's trying to bring all religions together. You know, you've seen mm -hmm. those bumper stickers oh, that say right. coexist, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to bring all religions together under one umbrella. And a lot of the um the Christian churches here in the United States have drank the Kool-Aid. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of the bishops and leadership of, of a lot of major Christian organizations have drank the Kool-Aid. You know, and so as a result of that, um a lot of organized religion, I'm just not I don't I don't have no time for it. I don't have any time for it, you know. Um, you have to be very, very careful. You know, they're, 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 uh, you know, T.D. Jakes, you know, he didn't drink the Kool-Aid, you know. Um, Joel Osteen drank the Kool-Aid. A lot of these folks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in, in bed with uh, Oprah Winfrey and, and her, you know, humanistic, you know, religion. Uh, you know, it's just, it's all jacked up, you know. But some people prefer to have the power they can see today Mm -hmm. versus being able to come down here when he comes with all his saints mm -hmm. and to be ruling and reigning for a thousand years, right? And then when that ends, he's going to judge those because notice you got people that are still being hard-headed. Mm -hmm. right? That's not coming, right? Yeah. right? So for a thousand years, they're going to be able to live down here for a thousand years, uh, basically serving us. And then the devil during this time is bound up in, in, uh, in chains for a thousand right. years. The most high going to lose him for a season. He's going to get in their ear. They're going to rebel again and try to make a war with, with, with the saints. And it's going to be a, you know, a 30 second war. You know what I'm saying? And he's going to wipe them out. Go ahead. I heard that on my phone. To turn it up and they're listening to it. Right? Yeah, right, right. The saints, the saints, the saints, they should sit it on my phone. Absolutely. They're going to, they're going to, you know, a thousand years at the end of a thousand years, he's going to kill them all, raise them back up, right. judge them. And then throw, you know, death and hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And that's going to be the final punishment for all the knuckleheads. So that's going to be the end of all the knuckleheads. Right. And then the only thing that left is, is, is the most high and the saints that paid the price to live for, for eternity. And I'm telling you, there's nothing in this world that's so, worth me giving up what I got. That be right. why that's a lot of people put a lot of different religion out here to confuse that's what that's the devil's plan. That was Satan's plan. See, when he couldn't, when he couldn't get the people just to outright worship him, remember what Yeshua did. He, he, he gave that parable. He said, I want to plant some good seed in the soil. Mm -hmm. The devil came and planted wicked seed mm -hmm. in with the good. And so when the tares grew up, the tares looked just like wheat. So if a terror pastor, a pastor terror go on and start a church, you got you got a wicked church with a right. wicked leader. 
All right? And so that's that's the problem. You got a lot of leaders that are out here, you know, fulfilling their purpose, which is to deceive people. And we just got to be aware of that. And that's why you got to read the scriptures. Okay. Because it, let me finish. So okay. because if you read the scriptures, if somebody's saying something off, you can judge it based upon the word. Right. If you're not reading the word, then somebody can tell you any other thing and you end up, you know, like, you know, Jim Jones <laughs> drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, right. the folk in, in, that follow Jim Jones, they drank the Kool-Aid and they all died. Right. right? Yeah. So, so go ahead. Um, go ahead. Okay. But a lot of people say they read the Bible, but they don't understand. That's why we have Bible studies. And okay, but they go to a church. If I'm with a pastor and I'm reading, I'm thinking he's if, telling me the right if you thing. Gotta, if, I, I get you. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing: if you if you're praying and you're determined to get this knowledge, the Most High is gonna make sure you get it. You know, uh, you know. Sometimes you can hear people say something, and you, and you just know it's off mm -hmm. if you've been reading. But you. Right. you you, saints, all I can tell you is you, you have to give attention to this word. Right. You, you have to. I mean, there's not going to be an excuse. There's right. not going to be an excuse because he, he has a desire that everybody get it. And I, I'm glad you, um, that question led me to the scripture I almost forgot to give. Uh, okay, so go to 2 Peter 3. And one of our dear sisters saying, I need yeah, more study. I'm doing this every week. Right. That's why I'm doing this every week. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the place. I said, I'm, I'm going. It's like someone just saying, just go back, go home. I said, no, I'm, yes. I'm late, but I'm going. Yes, because it, the enemy don't want you guys to get this information. And I, that's what I said, too. You know, because I guarantee you, every week you're going to hear something that's going to blow your mind. Right. But, you know, if you mm -hmm. keep coming, you know, eventually, you know, and you take notes and you go back and review the things I'm giving you. Plus, I, you know, I'm recording these things. Um, make certain that you guys are getting it, you know, so go back and look at the video. You know, if you guys haven't already, subscribe to the channel, Dr. Russ E. Hoover. Dr. Russ E. Hoover. I listen one the two. Hmm? I listen one of the yeah, two. Yeah, go to, go, to, go to YouTube, do a, a, a search for Dr. Russ E. Hoover, and you'll, you'll see my, my picture pop up. Go to there, mm -hmm. subscribe, and just start looking for the weekly Bible study. Um, you know, messages, mm -hmm. and then uh, you'll start learning this stuff. Just listen to that stuff over and over again, okay? Well, we're in Second Peter 3, starting at verse 8. Um, but, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us were. Look at this now not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's a, that's telling us his heart right there. Right, right. He does not want any to perish. Right. So if you got a sincere person, guess what? He's going to make certain you get what you need. I mean, think about it. Right. Why are we here today? One person asked a question. That question somehow got to my wife. Right. She came to me mm -hmm. and said, you know, Megan's got questions that she's not getting the answers at the church she's going to. And I'm like, the only thing I can think of is start a Bible study. Yeah. Right? right. Start a Bible study. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm I'm like, I'm not the guy that says, you know, we got to have, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 people. Right. One soul is all it takes. Yeah. One soul is important to the most high, so one soul is important to me. You know, so there's no way that, you know, if if he cares and he does care, you say he wishes that none would perish. But that all will come to repentance, to a change of heart, and to give themselves over to him, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, notice it said here now, but the day of Yahweh is coming as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, mm -hmm. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So it's not a, he's not talking about no flood here. Mm -mm. He's talking about fire next time, yeah. right? He's talking about fire next time. You, mm -hmm. I, you, want, you might want to read that whole chapter on that. Yeah, but we're gonna, um, yeah, second, second Peter three. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what you're saying there. Do anyone know about notion? What, is, what are you saying there, sis? She says a Bible study app. I, I'm, I'm gonna look it up, and I'll have some answer for you next week. It's a Bible study app, so I'll take a look at it and see what they talk about, but. Any any apps that that will help you 
to, you know, to study, but you still got to be careful. Right. You know, that's why, you know, he gave the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. He didn't give Bible, uh, he didn't give Bible apps as one of the fivefold ministry. They can be a help, but you still need to have a guide that's going to help you to navigate and understand what you're, what you're hearing and what you're, what you're you know, uh, reading and stuff. So, um, you know, you find someone who's uh, sincere and, and, and care about your soul, you know, you're going to be, you're going to be good. But, you know, I was so, I was so disappointed. This one brother I used to um, be around sometime. Um, he made a comment and I'm like, where, where did he get that from? He was saying that, um, you know, all pastors manipulate their people. Ooh. And I'm like, wow. What, what are you talking about? He's like, man, you know, all pastors manipulate their people. Mm. But then later, I found out this guy is a Mason. Nice. So, yeah, if he's a Mason, then, yeah, maybe, you know, what he's doing is a, is to manipulate because he doesn't care about the souls of people. Right. You know, he's just a, a hireling. You know, you sure talk about people that's a hireling. They don't care about the sheep. He's there, you know, for the money. Yeah, you know, so yeah, <clears throat> there's some there's some people out there that will manipulate people. I'm I'm not that guy. In fact, in fact, we've been in all the time we've been having these Bible studies. Uh, how many orphans have I raised? Right. Not a one. It's not about the money. It's about the souls. Right. right? Uh, so, you you know, you find somebody that's, that's sincere and care about people. And, you know, and I'm not saying it's wrong to support a work. You know, uh, but I'm just saying I'm not about that. You know, and you know me for a long time, Holly. You know, from, right. from a ministry point of view, you know, I've, I've never been one to take advantage of people. You know, right. it's not it's not about that. It's about it's about the soul. We have to stand before the Most High right. and give account for how we treat His people. And I'm not trying to get beat up, you know, by the right. Most High for taking right. right. advantage right. of people. Right? right? I'm not that guy. Right. Let's go ahead and pray. I think we got some good stuff out today. Okay. All right. Bless you, Yahweh Yeshua, our Elohim, King of the Universe, who gave us a Torah of truth and implanted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, Yahweh Yeshua. Give her the Torah in Yeshua's name, so be it. And the Rana benediction. Yahweh 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 May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh make his face shine upon you and show his favor. And may Yahweh lift his constant upon you and give you what? Shalom. Peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. All right, till next time, saints. Shavuot Tov. Have a blessed, blessed week. All right.